and Crest by no means would ever let Bo Jack shine his shoes because he can't picture the greatest lightweight in his mind of all time shining my shoes. So he insists that Bo Jack get up there and he shine his shoes. Well, what a nice tribute that was. But I notice about fighters like that is they're willing to take the risks for greatness because if you're going to knock another guy out, you got to get close enough for him to do it. And when you do that, you can also be knocked out. And another thing I notice is that there seems to be fewer brutal fights today, fewer fights of the Hagler, Hearns, and Pryor Arguello type. Is that true from your views of all of those great fight films? Well, when you talk about brutal fights, you have to have two authentic tough men. Well, in which you look at Ike Williams, Kid Gatlin, that area, everybody was authentically tough. They were tough men that came to fight and they believed in themselves and they had the confidence that no one in the world could hurt them, beat them, and so they were willing to take their chance. That's because they believed that. On the other side, we're objective and we're watching, and it's like, whoa, he's taking chances with somebody that's very dangerous. Prize fighting is nothing if not dangerous and often brutal. But where human beings are concerned, you can be sure that the ridiculous is also not far behind. There's little room for fun in the boxing ring, with exceptions like this one, in which referee Dean Martin and challenger Jerry Lewis team up against heavyweight champ Rocky Marciano. It's all for fun, but occasionally the real fight game provides a few choice moments that can only be appreciated with a sense of humor. Twelve years into his official retirement, Jack Dempsey found himself back in the ring as referee when a disagreeable professional wrestler named Cowboy Luttrell took a swipe at Ref Dempsey. The former heavyweight champ numbed him with a shot to the chin. That incident set up this silly duel in which the 45-year-old Dempsey revived his once awesome boxing skills, battering his opponent around the ring, repeatedly knocking him to the canvas. But the stubborn cowboy refused to stay down. Dempsey's only recourse to knock him out of the ring, putting an end to the feud and the absurd contest. The role of referee seemed somewhat more demanding in the early 1900s when Mexican Joe Rivers challenged then lightweight champion Ad Walgast. The champ had defended his title in four bouts over two years, each time accompanied by Jack Walsh, a friend and Walgast's own personal referee. But in the ninth round, this somewhat sublime relationship turned ridiculous when after having pounded Rivers to the canvas, Walgast falls, nearly knocking himself out. Incredibly, it's his friend, Referee Walsh, who helps Walgast to his feet, securing another title defense. The referee in this bout provided surprisingly little interference when German middleweight Peter Mueller tried to recapture the title he had lost to rival Hans Stretz. In this rematch, Mueller threw such wild punches that a stray fist mistakenly flattened the referee. When ring officials climbed through the ropes to halt the contest, he tore into them as well. Ironically, Mueller lost on a technicality because his cornermen had entered the ring too soon. In another bizarre contest, challenger Stanley Ketchell, made to look heavier than his middleweight size, secured a deal to go a full 20 rounds with the great heavyweight Jack Johnson. Johnson scored solidly throughout the bout, but when Ketchell slipped in a few heavy body shots, Johnson decided to cut the deal short. After being decked by the challenger in the 12th, the champion arose with a smile and proceeded to launch a furious attack, shooting a right hand with such force, it left the middleweight a mouthful of broken shards, as Johnson casually brushed off a pair of teeth that had embedded in his glove. Said the champion afterward, he crossed me and I made him pay for it. After knocking each other silly for 10 rounds, these fighters were too exhausted to enjoy the hilarity of this moment. Each man makes and takes one last punch. Lights out as they tumble arm in arm to the canvas.
I guess that stuff is funny by boxing standards, but I don't think it was exactly choreographed by Charlie Chaplin or even Richard Pryor. The only thing funny that I've ever seen you involved in was your fight with Bone Crusher Smith. I thought it was hysterical that people paid $700 ringside to see that non-fight. Well, I agree with you 100 percent, but I'm sure Bone Crusher Smith doesn't think that way. I'm sure he, he believed that wasn't funny at all. Bone Crusher Smith, a big guy. There are other big guys. They throw punches from way out in the bleachers. They land on people, and nothing seems to happen. What does it take for a real knockout puncher to get the job done? Well, there's certain kind of knockout punches. There's something, it, being a big man really doesn't matter. It has no significance in knocking out someone. The main point is the quickness and what you throw the punches and that, the leverage is what you have in the shoulder snap. And, that's, and the object of really knocking out an individual is throwing a punch where he can't see. And when there's combination punches, and when you throw punches and you, and you keep his mind preoccupied with the body punches and the, the other two head punches that come to the head are the knockout punches. And then again, there's one punch knockout punches, which they throw one punch to the body, and then the other punch to the head, which again, the opponent's mind is so preoccupied on the one punch which rattles him just a little bit, and that's when the other punch comes in. Yeah, what I see in what you're saying is, is one, the getting the shoulder in. A lot of fighters are, are arm punches. And secondly, the quickness so that the opponent doesn't see the punch and that that's what knocks him out. He's not prepared for it. Absolutely. Let's take a look then at some of the great one-punch knockouts of story and song in boxing history. It is the single punch that can suddenly and prematurely terminate any fight. Often described as a bomb, explosion, or bolt of lightning, the one-punch knockout is one of the most exciting and most remembered moments in the sport of boxing. At age 37, heavyweight challenger Joe Walcott faced his fifth and possibly last title shot when he fought the four to one favorite champion, Ezra Charles. In two previous meetings, Charles had won by decision, but for the never before champion, a perfect left hook made Joe Walcott the oldest fighter to ever win the heavyweight crown. 35 years later, Mike Tyson at age 20 became the youngest fighter to ever win the heavyweight crown. That was a right to the body and an uppercut to the head, and Burbick is down. With one punch, WBC champion Trevor Burbick was knocked down more times than he had ever been knocked out. It's over. That's all. And we have a new era in boxing. A rematch would not be necessary, but one that would be was between Ingemar Johansson and the heavyweight he had taken the title from 90 days earlier, Floyd Patterson. In their previous fight, Patterson suffered a total of seven knockdowns. The outcome of this rematch would be different. Standing more upright than usual, Patterson dropped the champion with a fifth round left hook. His left foot twitching, Johansson lay unconscious as Patterson became the first heavyweight to regain the title. At age 22, Wilfred Benitez attempted another boxing first to become the youngest fighter to win world titles in three divisions, a feat that had not been accomplished in over 40 years. With one punch, boxing's history was rewritten when Benitez landed a perfect thunderous right to the jaw of junior middleweight champ Maurice Hope. Five foot, seven inch, light heavyweight champ Dick Tiger needed more than hope when he took on six foot three inch Bob Foster. To this day, it is the largest height differential in title fight history. In the fourth round, the legendary Tiger suffered the first knockout in his professional career. And 
For the next six years, Bob Foster would reign as the light.